are about to connect with people who are ready to bring you the most open, honest, and revealing life stories. Welcome to Journey TV. Welcome to today's episode of Journey TV. I'm Merlene Camille, and I have a very special guest for you today. Dr. Felicia Archer is here with me, and she's going to share her journey with you. Felicia? Dr. Felicia, welcome. Hello, thank you so much for having me. It's finally, finally. I know, right? <laughs> Listen, it is, it is different to have um, a fellow talk show host on my show. Yeah, I, I understand. But you're my girl. So I'm excited to finally be here. Mm -hmm. And um, I definitely have to have you on Transparent Talk TV. Awesome, awesome. And we will share all, you know, all your information on Transparent Talk TV a little later with our viewers. Yeah. Um, I'm sure many viewers out there know you, but I still want you to introduce yourself to them. Okay, so I'm Dr. Felicia Archer. Um, my pet name is uh, my family name is Fifi, but everybody know me as Firestarter, Firestarter. Um, <laughs> because of the way that the Lord would use me in ministry. And I got that name several years ago when I started radio on Glory 93.9 FM, mm -hmm. actually spurred gospel. And then I transitioned to Glory 93.9 FM. I'm an author. I'm a life coach. Mm -hmm. um, I hold several degrees in um, Christian leadership and organizational management skills. Um, I'm a host of one of the largest non-denominational women's conferences, Women at the Well. Mm. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. The name of my company is True Vine, publishing and marketing company. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord. I love people. And I'm a lover of life. So that's me in a nutshell. In a nutshell, because yes. I'm sure there's more. <laughs> yes. But awesome. Um, and you, you, you just have so much energy, just your whole presence, even on social media, you know, you speak life into people. Um, just here, as soon as you open your mouth, everything just lit up. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it is a pleasure to be connected with you. It's actually a blessing to be connected with you. Amen. It's a blessing to be connected um, with you too, because I believe that whenever when God wants to bless you, he sends someone into your life. Whenever when the enemy wants to curse you, he sends someone into your life. So the currency of the kingdom is relationships. And so I believe that this is a divine connection. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, bro. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. That's a lot to take in, but yes. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, so you're holding your book, right? You just released this book. Yes, The Tell Single us Preacher. So The Single Preacher is a hot seller. The first week we got the books, was sold out before the books got here. And yes, you finally got your book. Your book. And um, it is a book that the Lord had me to write about my journey in terms of actually being a single preacher. Mm -hmm. And I'm very transparent and open in this book where I talk about the do's and the don'ts of dating. I share my life um, I'm with my readers. Mm -hmm. This book was... I decided to write this book after so many times after preaching everyone was interested to find out Felicia how do you date as a public figure mm -hmm. how do you date as a woman mm -hmm. and so I decided hey why not write a write, write a book about it and why not talk about it and I talk about some of the myths of being single as well um, because one of the things I discovered is that we do not know how to date in our society if I go out with Peter today, everybody automatically think me and Peter is in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So in this book, I talk about what dating is. Mm -hmm. So dating, the word dating comes for, from the word data, which means to collect information. Oh, so if I decide to go out with Peter or John today, said, yeah. I am just collecting information. Mm -hmm. And based on that information, I then would go ahead and make a decision in terms of, you know, whether or not I want to exclusively see Peter, see Peter or see John. Mm -hmm. And so, but in our society, we got it all mixed up. If I go on with you, I'm automatically your boo and be in a relationship, but it's not like that. Yeah. And so, you know, I share my heart in this book. This book is a hot seller. Mm -hmm. It's available on Amazon. It's available in Logos Bookstore as well as the Bible Gift and Book Center. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you so for being so transparent and sharing your journey. Yes. Now, I, I know that 
in our conversation, you did say something that was very powerful. Well, you said the enemy, you will use a relationship to distract you. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, I, of course, you are heavily in ministry. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, are we going to see that in this book as well? Yes. Actually, in my first book, I talk about, um, in the, 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 the name of the book is called She Found Herself. Mm -hmm. And so, I talk about me actually being the prodigal daughter. Mm -hmm. Because you see, I grew up in church, I'm a PK. But at the end- Tell our viewers what a PK is. A PK is a preacher's kid for those <laughs> that might not know. And um, so of course for me, the struggle and the pressure was real to be the perfect daughter. But at the age of 13 years old, I decided, you know what, I want to do my own thing. And um, I started to date older men, believe it or not. And um, as a result, like I say, the, um, anytime when the enemy wants to curse you, he would always send someone into your life. And so I met this guy, he is 22 at the time, and I was, yes, 13, going on 14. I'm being transparent here. I'm sharing my truth here. Yeah. I'm sharing my truth here. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I talk about it in the book, so it's, it's nothing new. Right. And I remember it was in December of 2009. My mother said, my stepmother said to me, Felicia, every rope has to come to an end. And I did not understand what, what she, she was, was saying, saying at that time. Mm -hmm. And not until me and him decided to go out. And basically we got into this argument and this argument proceeded in his cousin's vehicle. And it led to him basically telling me, your parents will never see you again. He drove oh, down in a dark. How old were you at this point? At this point I was 14 years old. Yeah. He drove down in a dark secluded area, just bush. And I remember he took away my phone from me. So it was in that moment where I recognized there was no mommy, no daddy, no other boyfriends, nobody that I could have called on. But I thank God for the seed of God that was planted in my life at that time. So I remember to call on the name of Jesus. And when he told his cousin, stop the car, he came out of the vehicle with a weapon in his hand. It was dark at that time. But he had another person here who... Uh, someone else was yes. present. Yes, yeah, someone else was and present. And they wouldn't, they... No, actually, his cousin was encouraging him to take my life. What? Not even, his cousin wasn't even on my side trying to talk sense in his head. And so he came out of the vehicle and he had that weapon in his hand. And I remember when he opened up the door and he swung at me and he went to hit me in my upper body. I remember me bracing myself for impact. And I don't know if I said it out loud or if I said it in my heart, but I remember me saying, Jesus and instantly his hands immediately dropped. Wow. And I prayed, I said a prayer in my heart. I said, God, if you could get me out of this, I promise you that I would give my life to you. I promise you that whatever it is you ask me to do, whatever it is you call me to do, God, I'll do. Mm -hmm. I, because see, there's a difference between being saved and being surrendered. Mm -hmm. And so I said, God, I will surrender. Mm -hmm. A few minutes later, after he sniffed cocaine, he said, you know what, let's drop this gal home. She ain't into nothing. Those are some of the best words I've heard in my 27 years of living. When I came out of that vehicle that night, I literally wanted to kiss the ground because that's how happy I was to be alive. alive. It wasn't in a traditional church setting that I gave my life to the Lord okay. or that this metamorphosis started in me. Mm -hmm. But it was right there in my room. I got down on my face and I said, God, this is it. I'm tired of trying to fix my life. I'm tired of trying to do my own thing. I'm tired of pretending as if I'm happy. Because after the body and after the sex, after the drinking, after the smoking, God, I'm still empty. And so it was in that moment where I decided to give my life to the Lord. Wow. What has it been easy since? No. no. Am I perfect? No. no. But at the end of the day, every time I fall down, I get back up again. And that's what the journey is about. And I was just going to say that. That's why it's so important for us to tell our journey. Mm -hmm. Because of that experience, you are able to reach your people, yes. the people that you have been um, chosen to speak over mm -hmm. in a different way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people see, see you or see anyone and they only see what is in front of them. They have no idea what they went through. But we're gonna take a quick break and be right back to finish this conversation with you. Yes. Don't you go anywhere, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Nikosi Kweku Simonet, CEO and Operations Manager at Sign Island. Sign Island started from desperation. My wife went ahead and bought the first printer. I still have no idea how we are where we are. I owe it all to my staff and my customers. You need support. One man is not an island. You can't do it on your own. 
If you think you can do it on your own and you are succeeding, you can do even more with a little bit of support. The support I've got from my clients has been amazing. Welcome back to our conversation with Dr. Felicia Archer, the fire starter. If you are just joining us, you missed the fire that was started already. But we are going to continue with this powerful conversation. So Felicia, you mentioned the book, She Found Herself as well. Yes. And you said that in that book, you talked about being the prodigal daughter. Yes. Um, help us to understand exactly what that looks like, what that looked like in your life. Okay. So, of course, most of us um, would have probably heard the story before of the prodigal son. We know he traveled away from home, asked for his inheritance before time. And the Bible says that he was, he found himself feeding swine. After all his money had run out, there was no friends, nobody find him. He found himself feeding swine. Now, there, there are part of that scripture says, and he came to himself which means that he caught himself it was in that moment in time where he catch himself and it was as if um you know he had an epiphany experience i don't have to be here the slaves in my father's house living better than me let me try hard go home and so for me i refer to myself um during that time as the prodigal daughter because i knew that no matter how far i strayed away from god or from home, so to speak, he would always accept me back, even in my messed up state, even in my messed up um, situation. And, um, you know, of course, being a PK, the church people began to talk, um, you know, the family began to talk, friends began to talk, and it was, of course, a lot of pressure. But I'm grateful to God for my stepmother, my biological mother and my father that never gave up on me. As a matter of fact, my stepmother told the church, listen here, I don't care what my daughter is going through right now. The hand of the Lord is on her life. And there will be a day when she will give her life to Jesus. As a matter of fact, there will be a day when she will prophesy to some of y'all and lay hands on some of y'all. And so no matter what, don't talk about her, but pray for her. And that was... Um, the message she gave to the church wow. and she never stopped praying for me as a matter of fact some days I would go home from partying and stink of smoke and alcohol and my stepmother would re never she never um, referred to me as an alcoholic as a junglist as lilting none of those pet names they referred to me in the world as she would always say woman of God how are you prophetess how are you and I'd all say mom mommy mom who's the woman of God who's the prophetess you know exactly how I live in because I was always real and I always told them I'm never going to be a hypocrite if I in the world I'm going all the way mm -hmm. if I forgot I go in all the way. Mm -hmm. So there ain't gonna be no in and out type of situation. No, 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 no. I ain't got, I always tell them I ain't gonna play with God. Mm -hmm. And so my community, my parents kept me during that time. They covered me, they prayed for me. And no matter what the people were saying or what the market was saying, the talks in the market was, they stood by me. Mm -hmm. And that is what made the difference because the Bible says that when the prodigal son returned home, the father, he celebrated him. He threw a party. He embraced him. He gave him the best of everything. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I would always tell parents is no matter what it is, your children might be dealing with, struggling with, going through, or, or the embarrassment um, um, they might bring to the family. Amen. If you speak life, you remember the word of the Lord that's over their life. And if you love them in the midst of that, um, they will come back home. Because love lifted me. It wasn't, it wasn't anything else, but it was the love of, love, God, love of God through my parents that Amen. kept me. And that's what some people need, just Amen. love. Amen. So when you came back to being the woman of God, mm -hmm. being the prophetess, you, I know you mentioned earlier with the situation with um, the guy that you were dating at 14. You said that something happened in that moment. Yes. Was that when you would say you no longer was the, the prodigal daughter? It was that night that I went home and I said, God, I surrender. Mm -hmm. It was in that moment. So from the age of 14, you've been full into ministry? I started um, from the age, I started preaching at the age of 16 years. I grew up in church all my life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can do in the church. Mm -hmm. 
I, except for play the keyboard. But when it comes down to preaching, leading praise and worship, the dance team, youth leader, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in church and I always knew the Lord. But when I became fully engaged in ministry again, it would have been at the age of 15 years old. And then at the age of 16 years old, I began to preach the gospel right. of Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. So last year I celebrated one decade of full-time ministry. Congratulations. Amen. To God be the glory. <laughs> so what, what would you say to a young lady out there who might be just encountering so many challenges, so many situations, sometimes because, you know, we put ourselves in those situations. How I want you to speak life over those young ladies out there who may need the guidance, need the support and, and, and need to know that they are loved unconditionally, mm -hmm. whether if it's not with their support system, their physical support system, it's through God. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have to understand is that a lot of times our young ladies begin to act out because they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. When you don't know who you are in life, people will tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. And as a result, whatever they label you as, you will begin to take on that nature, that very character. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage them, know who you are. You are a child of God. You are royalty. You are the apple of God's eyes. Mm -hmm. He loves you. And even in the absence of, of a strong community, he said, listen, even when mother and father forsake you, I, the Lord your God, I will take you up into my arms. I will embrace you. And so remember who you are. You are a queen. You deserve the best in life. And you should never settle. And with God on your side, as you would put God first in everything that you do, the Bible says to seek it first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added. And so no matter what it is, you might be dealing with, I've been depressed. I've been abused sexually, emotionally, verbally, you name it. I've been in the pit just like Joseph. And if God could deliver me, I mean, I grew up in Montel Heights. I grew up in, in what is considered to be the ghetto. But look at my life today. If God did it for me, he could do the same for you too. Amen. Amen. Listen, <laughs> fire all over, all over Journey TV. Um, I mean, I have to have you back. Yes. I have to have you back. There's so much more to, to share. And thank you for speaking life over me, over our viewers. Thank you so much. Before we um, close out, I want you to tell our viewers how they can follow you. And then also tell them um, about, you introduce um, Transparent Talk to them so that when you start your new season. Yes. Tune in. Well, y'all can go ahead and follow me on social media. The name is Felicia Archer on all social media platforms that include Instagram, Facebook, as well as TikTok. Yes, your girl is on TikTok. It's very interesting. And um, or you can go ahead and send me an email. The email address is freshfireministries2010 at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to my good friend early in. Um, we're now currently recording season two of Transparent Talk TV. So you're going to grace us with your presence. Um, it airs every two Tuesdays in the month. So the next season will begin in September. And they can go ahead and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. YouTube and Facebook and that's how they'll be able to watch Transparent Talk. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I just want, I mean, <laughs> just all the fullness of you. This has been very refreshing. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and for um, starting up all this fire in us. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. And I just want you to always remember that with God behind you in his arms, beneath you, you can face whatever lies before you. This is your journey. Embrace it. Thank you so much. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Want to learn more about our guests? Subscribe to Footprints Journey blog, where special features will be released to give you more insight into their journeys and allow you to ask them questions. We want you to journey with us. Footprints! I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. And you? You are an overcomer. I know because you have endured and persevered through so many of life's biggest challenges. Join us for stories like yours, stories of incredible strength, courage, and survival. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here on RTV. Journey TV. Journey TV. We share life's truths.
The Give Back, presented by Insure. Your life, your health, your Insure. My name is Candace Roll, and I am the director of P31, which stands for Proverbs 31 Young Ladies Mentorship. P31 was not started or initiated by me. It actually came about from the renaming and rebranding of the Young Ladies Fellowship in 2006 by Pastor Angie Burroughs, Nikhil Davis, and Tonette Burroughs. Um, but what inspired me to be interested in being in a leadership position in this program, I actually grew up in the program from the age of 13 um, until about 1920 when I was approached by the current leader, Davria Burroughs, and she wanted to know if I was interested in taking on a leadership position and I accepted. A P31 is more community um, focused, so we have mentored numerous amount of girl, females within the Carmichael community, as well as girls that attend the church as well, Bahamas Faith Ministries. The focus of the actual program, um, as indicated by the name, is to mentor these young ladies in the fashion of the outline of the Proverbs 31 woman outlines within scripture. Um, so we focus on giving them the principles of what it is to be a virtuous woman, as well as we counsel them and mentor them in everyday issues such as mental health, bullying, sex, relationship, whatever it may be. Um, so my goal um, as director is just to give these young ladies the best help that they can get at this very fragile point in their lives. So if you are willing to be a part in volunteering or sponsoring this organization, you can contact myself at 421-0060 or you can also contact our youth office at 461-6430 and the email for the organization is p31youngladies at gmail.com. Move with strength and energy. Drinking Ensure, you get vitamins, minerals, and up to 30 grams of high quality protein. Your life, your health, your Ensure. Philippa, earlier Felicia, the fire starter, Archer was here. And of course, she shared just her process of stepping into her full purpose and into her full calling. We heard how she was the particle daughter she described herself. We heard how relationships would have distracted her from her true calling. But eventually, she evolved and stepped back into who God has called her to be. What is your feedback on, I guess, just her process and, and going through, through that and just people who are looking for their purpose and you know them just stepping back in stepping into purpose yes so for persons discovering or finding purpose is a journey some persons come into it earlier than others mm -hmm. but it's not it's not mm, i would say something that you should beat yourself up about especially if you are doing the work to find out to discover what your purpose actually is. Um, for Felicia, you know, that, that is awesome that she was able to come through that, but she, she spoke about um, distractions. We all have distractions. No one is exempted from that. Uh, people make mistakes, right? We have detours, we have derailments, but those circumstances in our lives that sometimes take us away from what we know or what we believe we know, is our calling or our purpose. Sometimes those situations within them, there are lessons for us to learn. Mm -hmm. And those lessons, they kind of direct and guide us too. If we allow them to teach us, right? Mm -hmm. What our purpose or calling or calling is actually. Interesting, interesting. So what would be the steps for someone to discover their purpose? Um, and I know you're here as a behavioral <laughs> therapist, but based on your experience as well, um, just your life experience, what would your and feedback I'm be? And I here thinking, it took me a while mm -hmm. to find out what it was. And for me, it was a process of, and this may benefit someone out there, it was a process of trying new things, trying things that I like, mm -hmm. and then it became a process of elimination, mm -hmm. right? I, I pay attention to my body, I pay attention to my spirit. Those things that brought me most joy and fulfillment, those were the things that I started to do more of. And when I was able to see the impact 
that the things that I did or engaged in had on the lives of others, I connected that with my purpose because there's definitely uh, a difference between passion and purpose, interest and hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, so once you are able to distinguish between those things, um, you know, you, you come into what your, your purpose is. And I, I am one, I'm a strong believer that purpose is evolving, mm -hmm. right? Definitely evolving. So what I, my purpose was five months ago, five years ago, isn't what it is now. And I'm certain if I'm around for another 10 years, it won't be the same either. Mm -hmm. So if you are on a journey or the journey of self-discovery and you are wanting to come into your purpose, I want to encourage you to fall in love with that journey because it definitely is a process. And some of the practical things that you can do is surround yourself with persons who already know what their purpose is. Not just know it, but they're living and walking in it. And another thing that you can do is make those, those persons your mentors read. There's sufficient content out there read equip yourself with ways to um, walk into or come into your purpose and also another thing that you can do that i shared earlier was the process of elimination what are the things that you just enjoy doing what are the things that bring you greatest fulfillment and great impact on not just yourself but those around you and do more of those things thank you for joining us until next time give love and light to the people around you but most importantly don't forget to give it to yourself join us next time for more journey tv